This is your Solana Daily Debrief. It is the 1st of July. So quickly at CoinGecko, Bitcoin's around 62K, Ethereum's up a little bit, and Sol is around 147, almost at 150. If we have a look at some bigger gainers in the last 24 hours, the Layer 0 airdrop, which I haven't covered, working towards getting other ecosystems covered. It's hard work. Whiff is doing well. Bonk is also doing well. So there's still a decent amount of attention for the bigger meme coins. And then randomly up the top here, Ethereum name service is doing well as well. So a little bit of Bitcoin news. Remember with Bitcoin, this will lead the pack generally, and then altcoins will follow in general as a general kind of rule of thumb. So this is what Blunt says regarding BTC. Weekly shaping up now. So if we bring this up a little bit bigger, even zoom in a little bit, um, we can see here, this is his prediction. Basically, from where we are, from here, maybe a little bit of a crab market and then up we go. Now, I'm going to show you basically just bullish news. There'll be some people with bearish takes. I just haven't actually seen many. I'm seeing far more bullish. Here, local bottom is in. So up we go. Mag says half the Bitcoin bull run is over. Next half is going to be epic. So this is just to keep in mind the longer time frame. If you're trading in and out on a daily basis, then this is not for you. But for the longer term people that are here wanting to take more aggressive profits next year, just keep in mind it can go up. And then Mags also says forming a possible parabolic curve. Now he's got kind of some sort of uh, expectancy in terms of price. Uh, in time, but I would definitely think this is going to come out further, in my personal opinion. Bitcoin is breaking out, so the 22-day downtrend has broken to the upside. So this is what I'm saying. I just think there's a lot of people that are just focusing on this. And as this goes up, things will start to go up. You also have to keep in mind that we have these periods where they go in this consolidation, this crab market period. And like, it's so similar. It's just a different price. This is 2017. I don't know what it was in the last cycle because I don't have a side by side. But now this is taking longer to break out. But the expectancy is up we go. Reason number one to be bullish for July on this last day of bearish June. And this is basically just previous cycles. So bam, 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 bam. So just keep that in mind if you're starting to lose hope. Now you're also going to see a decent amount of hopium. I don't like the hopium. It just doesn't work because you think that you should never sell and not financial advice, but taking profit is smart. Like all the good traders, of course, take profit or at least they hedge. So lower bound 140,000 for this cycle, upper bound 4.5 million, not a chance. I don't even know where this comes from. Coin metrics, but absolutely crazy. Uh, well, assuming the same growth rate as the past three cycles, we would expect one BTC to be worth anywhere from 140 to 4.5. And I mean, that's just, that's complete hopium, just silly. But 140,000, not so much. That's fine. Just keep in mind where we are. Easy. Just keep in mind where we are and where we're going. So the distribution of 21 million Bitcoin, a decent amount has been lost. And then there's yet to be mined is only 6.6%. Government holds a small amount, but they only hold a small amount. So when you see all these tweets of them selling stuff, they're welcome to sell their Bitcoin. But there's a huge amount of people that will be buying this up that have really massive conviction and they already have hundreds of millions or billions of dollars. So they're not really going to mind. They just want to push the cycle further. So they profit. Now let's go into some soul price target and also some kind of soul analysis. So Capo says bullish against USD and bullish against BTC. The all-time high 2021, 260. We haven't approached anywhere. Well, we approached 200 and then we just kind of came back down. But there were, of course, calls to go down, right down to the downside, like from Blunts. Um, but I do not see that happening. I definitely see we're going up. And then Sol BTC also, you know, coming up is what the, the goal is. Now, Ansem has a viewpoint with regards to meme coins. You need to go and work out which meme coin you're going to go with, of course, which would take a de decent amount of research. But basically, one really kind of what would deem almost micro cap, so really small market share, and the next bucket, next bucket, next bucket, and then one billion meme major alongside heavy Sol bags. I would probably go with three 1 billion plus meme majors. So as an example, this person has Whiff, Pepe. Like, I just don't know how people can fade bonk. So I would go with some Whiff, a little bit of Pepe, just for the ETH exposure, but I'll probably get it with Clone po Protocol or I'd buy it on an exchange. And then of course, bonk. And then with the other ones, I have no clue whatsoever. 
I'm not sure if when token, which would probably be sitting in this market cap, I'm not sure if that's really worth it. It's just, it's not really kind of engaging people like other ones can. But uh, for the 1 billion, well, you heard what I said. Blunts has some massive targets with WIF. Now, just keep in mind, although I'm highlighting him, like in the previous cycle, I was in his kind of paid group, which had calls. And sometimes they did well, and sometimes they did terribly not well. So these are just predictions, predictions based on the technical analysis aspect that he actually follows. They don't have anything to do with fundamentals or, you know, do they actually start to gain more and more market share? And technical analysis, some people think it's just rubbish and other people think it has a part and some people think it's absolutely amazing. Either way, having a smaller bag of width and setting some price targets is personally what I'm doing. Marty on Sol, he said it was very frightening, but he's held Ethereum from day one and then he swapped it to Sol August 2023, which was perfect timing, of course. It's beaten Ethereum by almost 9x. And now he's suggesting, and it's not financial advice, or maybe it is from him, but it's not from me, 50% of your ETH to Sol ASAP and do this before it breaks this wall at 200 to 400. Remember this post, you can always swap back. The biggest thing is just going to be gas fee. So the easiest way to do this is to bridge some Ethereum to Sol or bridge Ethereum across with Dbridge with a little bit of Sol and then just going to do the swap on dupe if you want to do it. And then you can add to your ledger if you've got a decent amount. Uh, this is the last time he's saying it. And this is mental health advice. Swaps now at Sol under 150. Now with Ethereum, Ethereum is a more decentralized network. It definitely is. However, it's slower, fees are more expensive. It's not something that can onboard millions. So the kind of thesis is, well, with all of the Ethereum L2s put together, then there's a lot more reach that Ethereum ecosystem has, which is true. The issue is Ethereum people also speak about the fact that you basically, you need to have a decentralized network. It needs to be very, very decentralized so that it cannot be shut down by vested interests or attacked by people with a huge amount of ETH or whatever, or governments shutting them down. The thing is Solana is more decentralized compared to an ETH layer two, all the ETH layer twos, as far as I'm aware. And this is one of the reasons why Sol just keeps on winning because it does have that aspect. And I think it's going to do really, really well. Also, ETH is too far behind and it cannot catch up socially or in a techn technological sense. So this is another one of the issues here. When you go and play on layer twos, and we will be covering plenty of layer twos because it's plus EV. But every time you go between one blockchain until Dbridge came along, there were a lot of friction points. Now there's less friction points, but there are some fees, of course. So it's just another thing you have to learn. And if you're going to jump into a blockchain and then it doesn't do very well, then your NFTs kind of lose liquidity. And you need to be very, very selective when you're actually playing in these ecosystems. Whereas on Sol, you can just go and play. Anyway. Next bit of news, dupe stuff, or rather meow stuff, doing a PPP meme coin experiment. This is closed off now, uh, and it got huge, like 202,000 retweets. Absolutely insane. So, um, I mean, how they pull this data and how much it costs and how long, how long it takes with the Twitter API, I mean, I don't think they expected this to blow off. Basically, potentially a meme coin experiment. So I'm going to cover this really closely. If you don't know... Maybe we'll quickly pull it up, but mock dupe was a very worthwhile experiment early on. You know, it was said there was no promises, send it to zero. And, you know, it was just a target. It was just a pretend before dupe actually came out and it did really well. If people went in and were a little bit cheeky, just smart, if they actually went in, let's just kind of go all the way back. If they went in with multiple wallets, some people made absolute bank, like, cause they got this massive airdrop. And now it's down 70% from its relative all-time highs back in January. But maybe this can be a little bit of a different system. Maybe this can have, I don't know, a token 22 standard so that when you buy or sell or transfer, there's a decent tax and it can encourage something that's more player pump player. I'm unsure how that's going to work, but basically follow this. I hope you actually put in your wallet here. I maybe should have mentioned it a few different times, but you should probably be following Meow with notifications on. So flick them on. Just, he's kind of leading a large part of Solana. Now, uh, a little bit more of Hopium here. Stuff that I don't like. I've liked it, but I don't actually like it. 
We cannot compare Jupiter directly to Uniswap. They're different products. Unique wallets, June, total trades, whatever. Uniswap is a DEX, Jupiter. So as a DEX, it generates decent fees. Jupiter generates some fees, but not from the actual swaps. It generates them from limit, limit orders, perps, etc. So we can't really think like this. Jupe to $5 or whatever. I kind of view Jupe to go, probably go, it probably will go to this in the height of the bull. Uh, and definitely worth using, of course. Probably worth holding. Uh, for me, definitely worth holding. But for you, maybe it's more of a probable. But either way, use the dupe thing so that you're eligible for future dupe rewards. And if you do have dupe, and if it's just sitting in your wallet, I don't agree with that. I think it's far better that you stake it. We'll cover that quickly now. So if you staked and voted on all the proposals, the expectancy is around 22 cents per one dupe. Now, of course, when all of this comes out, Uprock, Shark, Zeus, the sell pressure on all these tokens will be quite considerable. So when these come out sometime in July, I would probably be um, expectancy, expecting some sort of, um, like maybe it's worth shorting at that time, especially the smaller ones, Shark, UPT. However, uh, bullish on UPT long-term, bullish on dupe long-term, Shark, not bullish, Zeus, not bullish on the token, not yet. And when it just hasn't captured the mind share in the meme coin market. So not bullish yet, but it can be. Next bit of news, exchange art. Go head over and check your art allocation. Uh, so go and connect your wallet at this website. It will be below. Alternatively, go and use Z's airdrop checker. I've covered this a few times. I haven't done a tutorial on it. Let me know if you want me to do a tutorial and I'll reach out and see if, if I can get that scheduled. Now, next bit of news, parcel. If you're actually participating in real estate, Go and get amongst this uh, because there are, like if you're trading in real estate, you may as well go and get some extra rewards with Parcel. If you're not still worth following Parcel, I just think it will do really, really well as the real estate narrative kind of comes into play next year. Also, I have this DeFi Llama. I've mentioned it many times. Go and grab this extension. I will put this link below, but this allows you to see fake Parcel websites just really easily. Just, I mean, this is a terrible example, but people will fall for this sort of stuff. Even if it's botted, they will definitely fall. So uh, keep that in mind and use that. It just helps you when you're a little bit tired or if you're new. Trader Cos says, going to be embarrassing when Sol's pushing fresh all-time highs and you realize you donated all your coins to D-tier celebrities. There's so many celebrities out there that, I mean, I'm so surprised that some of these people are with decent net worth, like Jason Derulo and whatnot, they're going and pushing these things. You've got a lot of people pushing these things. And the only one that I think has had, had any value is Mother and Iggy because she's there learning it, engaging, like making stuff cool, even though, you know, the token's not doing well. She's trying and she's like really all in invested. The other ones are just pumping and dumping for now. Solana Floor has said there's a whale that's recently acquired a million dollars worth of Mad Lads, also holds a huge number of Tensorians. Now, I don't see this as anything that you should basically trade off because these people have more money than you do. So if they have more money than you do, they can they can survive a million dollars worth. Just letting you know in case this is something that you actually want to kind of keep in mind that they have uh, 59 of these and a huge number of Tensorians. Maybe they know something we don't. Who knows? But just maybe as a, a good prediction. So Vincent from Dakota's, uh, not selling my D-Gods cost me more than $5 million. He was greedy and he sold 40 D-Gods and 50 Utes in the past few weeks. So whatever his expectancy was, whatever, he thought D-Labs was going to do really, really well. And you can go read this thread, but I'm just wanting you to keep in perspective that it's not financial advice. I know I keep saying that, but taking profits along the way is a smart thing to do. If you take profits and it goes bigger and bigger and bigger, you might regret it. However, if it starts to go down in price, it's just a smart thing just to take some profits. So NFTs, huge mint is happening. Solana Sensei, a couple of other ones. NFTs are pumping. Whole timeline post JPEGs. Are NFTs coming back? Maybe, but uh, probably not yet aggressively. If you have conviction in something, you may want to allocate some capital, but um, I'm unsure. I think some of them will come back, certainly not to the all time highs necessarily, but they could be profitable. In general, in terms of floor prices, things have bounced up quite a bit. Though I don't even know what this one is. But 
you can see that they have kind of been bouncing, which is good. Now with the Ton ecosystem, not related to Solana, but just he's got here regarding fair launch meta. Now this is a little bit time consuming. It's like with hamster combat, you need to go and tap stuff. But with Notcoin, it did well. Like if you went and put in a little bit of time, I think it worked out like $700 in the airdrop or whatever with a minimal amount of time. But you have to have 30 minutes a day that you want to go and spend on these kind of games. And they're going to get boring and repetitive. But it still is alpha because some will do well. Next bit of news, Sanctum. If you win your profile, great. You cannot update it now. Remember, you're not going to get penalized. You just won't get extra rewards if you've been contributing. So I was traveling, didn't have my ledger. I've gone and linked like my main one that has the referral link. That's a hot wallet and everything else I just didn't have time for because I didn't have my ledger. So this has now been locked until when you can actually go and get amongst it with the actual token generation event. There's going to be a lot of scams out there. Just be super vigilant. I don't want anyone to make any mistakes. Just wait until I cover it or until you see it firmly with a good URL in the Discord announcement channel for Sanctum. Now, the actual alpha of the day is Moonwalk Fitness. Get amongst this. I will post my referral link, just Seb Monty, in the referral section. Sign up and get ready for Moonwalk. So this is $10 entry, and there's $6,000 sponsored prize from Reciprocal Ventures, all domains, win-win coin as well. And I currently, I think there's about 250 people that are amongst it. Looks like, more or less, I will jump into my Soul Flare. It works with Soul Flare, Phantom, I'm not unsure what else. Probably just the two. But we come along and we just connect over here. Connect. And then there's a couple of semi-difficult things you need to do. You come and uh, join this link. So join, pay 10 USDC, join. And this starts tomorrow. It's going to take 10 USDC, a little bit of soul for a rent account. And then you deposit it in. You can see here, we have to do from the 2nd until the 7th, 10,000 steps. There is 259 players. I do want to see a whole lot of people using this because honestly, you're going to get a little bit chubby if you're just cryptoing too much and if you're not actually exercising. You don't want that. So this will start soon and then everyone that completes the challenge will get their 10 USDC back and then also a share of $6,000. It's just a good chance to actually get amongst the, the community. A little bit of extra kind of information. When you come into your settings, you want to connect your Google Fit and then also make sure you turn on location properly so it's GPS tracked as well. That allows you to have more accuracy with your steps. Otherwise, you might do 10,000 steps. It will say 8,000. Then you have to do 2,000 more. Because if you don't do your steps every day, then you'll actually miss out on some of your rewards or you'll lose some of your 10 USDC. Get amongst this. Honestly, it's very important to stay relatively fit during a bull market or in general, just always. Now the actionables. These I've mentioned a few days ago. Just Camino's vaults, Zex, so Sol. If you want to actually deploy some capital, Moonwalk Fitness, sign up today. This is the biggest one. DCA Soul on dupe.ag and stake it with validate.com. I want to see people staking with validate.com. Remember, if you have any questions or if you need support with validate.com, we're there and we will answer. Airdrop actionables. Get 20 to 30k points on Dbridge. This is time sensitive. Time is running out. Use Cube Exchange. You need to check in daily and do active tasks. My referral link is below. So even if you're not doing anything, even if you just check in, you start to accrue points. And this could be absolutely massive because it's available in the US. I need to find out which states are excluded. Remember the UI and UX is not the best, but all these things can be improved. They need users first. It's from a, a team that's shipped before. They've got money. They've got a, a dedicated, decent team. They want to make something better and better and better. And it's a hybrid model. So it's kind of custodial slash semi non-custodial. So it's good. Check out Jesse's thread on Ton, tap to earn, mini apps if you're keen. Also remember, register all your meme coin wallets with Holdium and check your art allocation with Exchange Art. That's all for today. If you like this, like it. If you loved it, subscribe. We'll catch you in the next video.